sono morti in Vietnam più giornalisti di quanti ne siano morti in tutta la seconda guerra mondiale. Vietnam was the war that had the most impact on you. On everybody was there. Once you had been in Vietnam, it you never forgot. Mm. You saw or, that. You saw oh, the decapitated yes, head in a helmet. Man, man. Yes, yes. Oh, and you and see and these things. You know, people don't realize what war is. People uh, uh, see war on TV. On TV, you know, blood looks uh, like this. You have not the noises. You have not the smells. Combat smells. Suppongo che ormai sia un po' un dovere per me di condannare gli uomini che ammazzano gli uomini con le guerre. C'erano nella piazza, nelle tre culture, all'incirca eh, 6.000 studenti, avrei detto, 5-6.000 studenti, assolutamente tranquilli, assolutamente pacifici. Io ero nella terrazza dell'edificio da cui loro parlavano. Sono piombati questa terrazza, prima una quarantina, poi un'ottantina di poliziotti in civile, con la rivoltella puntata, sparando su di noi. Non c'è stato nessun episodio che potesse provocare questa irruzione pazza, violenta. The lady I'm about to introduce is a legend uh, in her way. Uh, she's a, a journalist and uh, one of the most envied ones in the world. Um, I have often heard that people have submitted interviews with her and then wish they hadn't done them afterwards and yet they continue to do them because she has a reputation for being one of the great journalists uh, of our time. She did the interview with Henry Kissinger which he then read and said I was stupid to give that and um, it's very rare for him to give a private interview but she got one and then she did an incredible interview with President Thieu of South Vietnam and uh, Will you welcome, please, uh, the remarkable Oriana Falaci. This can't be very exciting for you. You've covered wars and riots and been in planes and tanks and trenches and the Middle East and everywhere. And it's my work. Uh, Dr. Kissinger is a, a diplomatic, is a politician, and uh, we all know that uh, Politics and diplomacy are the 
sublimation of lying, and sometimes they do have to lie. Yeah, they have to. I mean, I do understand that. Yeah. It's a necessity. Yeah. But I am a writer, I am a journalist, and I have to do all the contrary. I have to write the truth. Of course, I mean, if I go to interview Khomeini, I don't go as uh, the best of friends of Khomeini. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, um, I'm ready for the worst. He had said I was speaking about the Chador, but of course I was not speaking of an injument, of, of a piece of tissue, I was speaking of what the Chador meant. Lack of freedom, uh, another form of fascism. Yeah. You know what what about the Shah? Did you see any resemblance between those two? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Both absolutely. strong. Both fanatic. And, yeah. Both fanatic. Uh, at a certain extent, uh, speaking the same language. What about Gaddafi of Libya? Now, you got three men who are practically that's, all fanatics. That's garbage. <laughs> He's garbage. Yes. He's fool. I think uh, Gaddafi is clinically. Clinically for you go as an dad. enemy, as an adversary, as, as an adversary. You, you go Gaddafi, prepared yes. for combat. Uh, to, yes, yes, to a bastard. Yes. Her conversation with political leaders, including Henry Kissinger and Ayatollah Khomeini, were at the times confrontational, but always revealing. A child of socialists, she had contempt for authority, and once wrote. I have always looked at disobedience towards the oppressive as the only way to use the miracle of having been born. Oriana is always been a model for me, a figure mythic. And one day I realized that I had to find her. I had to meet her. And so it came to this strange, intense relationship, for me, of esteem and respect, and for her, I would say, of protection. Well, You've interviewed so many famous people, Oriana, but only one you really fell in love with? Is that the only one? Of course. I didn't need to interview Aleko to love Aleko. I mean. You know, the reason why he was not executed, it was the intervention of all, all the world, all the heads of state, everybody intervened to spare his life. Andai da Gavurelis, per undici ore e mezzo gli parlai. It was a political assassination, everybody knows it. Che le dittature siano esse di destra o di sinistra, o vestite di destra o vestite di sinistra, nere, rosse, gialle, verdi e viola, sono sempre uguali. Dimostra che il fascismo non, è, non ha colore, che la ricerca della libertà non ha colore e che la lotta dell'uomo che dice no è sempre la stessa.
uno scrittore anche quando eh, scrivo un articolo. Cioè sono uno scrittore prestato al giornalismo. Lo... La guerra è cambiata, questa è una Star Wars, è una guerra elettronica. E lui guarda la Acropolis e dice una buona democrazia, ma una democrazia, una nuova democrazia, ma una democrazia, una dirty democrazia, ma una democrazia, ma una democrazia migliore di quello che abbiamo ora. Siamo are a kind of pompous, we who belong to more or less democratic country when we pronounce democracy. And uh, uh, we forget too often how little democratic democracy is. The, another danger, it is the protection of the real, clear fascism, the fascist regime that the, the democracy exercises abroad, beyond its frontier. I mean, In 1990, she became increasingly reclusive, dividing her time between New York City and Florence. She returned to the public scene following the September 11, 2001 attacks with writings critical of Islam. Her book, The Rage and the Pride, drew accusations of inciting hatred against Muslims. What is it about, this rage and pride? I felt the rage for those who said, and there were many in Europe, oh, there are many people here who say, good, this service, the Americans, good. And this, of course, infuriated me. And I wanted to tell what is at the origin of all the turmoil that this book has caused in Europe, that you cannot split the Islamic terrorism. You cannot split it from the ideology which originated it, from the world that originates it, which is the world of Islam. Many don't like it, many others agree. Discussion is open. L'11 settembre ha provocato in lei una reazione che io ancora oggi non riesco a spiegarmi. Davvero brutta questa cosa che lei ha fatto. In un momento in cui bisogna cercare la pace. Io penso che abbia preso una posizione chiara, come ha sempre fatto. Mi chiedete se ha ecceduto? Probabilmente in qualche cosa. Ha diffamato qualcuno? No, non direi. most proud of? Several things, my honesty, my guts if you want, I have never written something without, something that would not be the result of a choice that I thought it was a fair choice, a right choice, without being intimidated by anybody. I love life. I think that 
being born is extraordinary, even when life is ugly. Ariana Falacci, journalist, war correspondent and author, died last week in her hometown of Florence, Italy. She was 77. She had suffered from cancer for many years. She is perhaps one of the most provocative interviewers of her generation or any generation whose fame reached its peak in the 1970s.